Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to try our uh, our hand at a paint tutorial video. So we're going to paint up the uh, the Kratos battle tank in the colour scheme of the Dark Angels. So uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay guys, so here we have the, uh, the tank. We've got it uh, sprayed up with Chaos Black spray. And the first thing we're going to, want to do is we want to give it an all over painting of Abaddon Black because Chaos Black is slightly different. Then we're going to give it a dry brush of Dark Reaper. We're going to give it another dry brush of uh, Thunderhawk Blue. And then at the very end, we are going to put a little mix of 50 50 mix of Thunderhawk Blue and a Shabdi Bone and sponge it on in certain spots all over the tank. So let's start with the uh, Chaos Black. So we want to give it a bit of a shake. Open it up, get some paint on our palette, and we're going to uh, we're going to use an extra large base brush for this from Games Workshop or Citadel, and we're going to water this down well because uh, you know we're just we're painting over this, but we we want this as like a, a backup if we make a mistake that we can just come back in with some Abaddon Black and uh, we're good to go. So just make sure that it's well watered on your palette. Start uh, get your here, well, I'm starting with the turret here. I just give it an all over painting of this. You don't need to be neat or tidy or anything, but anywhere you want to, uh, you want to be black, you're going to want to do this. And uh, I know it's a bit annoying, but it's worth it in the long run. Okay, so now we're going to come on to our first dry brush of Dark Reaper. Give it a bit of a shake there. It's some. Uh, I'm using uh, some old makeup brushes here. I thought these were cheap until my wife saw them and she was like, uh, no, they're not cheap, so I'll be telling anyone they are. Uh, anyway, they're makeup brushes that she didn't want, so I took them off her hands. And uh, just work it into the bristles of the brush. Just make sure that it's, it's well worked in there. You don't want a lot on the dry brush. You can always add paint to the miniature, but when it's on, you cannot take it off. You're gonna have to redo a whole area or a whole segment. So just get some kitchen paper, rub all that excess paint off. Um, you know, don't be afraid to give it a good, good wipe. Get right into those bristles. Okay, so now we'll uh, start dry brushing the, uh, the turret again here. And we'll just very gently just start going over and back across the top there. And it will start building up on all those curved edges and the raised details. Just give it a that that foundation for the the next uh, the next stages, and as I say, you want to work this over all of the uh, the miniature. Now I use this same uh, the same recipe for painting the the power armor of my Dark Angels, but for characters I edge highlight them. But for t twenty man tactical squad, feel free to dry brush them as well. I mean, it's the only way you're going to work through twenty marines in any sort of at any sort of speed at all. So you just work around there and work it all into the tank there. Okay, so with the Dark Reaper done, we're going to move on to uh, Thunderhawk Blue. And the same again, we want to uh, give it a shake, open it up, and uh, just get some out on our palette there as well. And just give it a good working in. I know this palette seems a little small, probably a little small for me, but it fits in the case, so that's why I just use it all the time. So get that Thunderhawk blue off that. Uh, I know it looks a little blue, you're thinking, really? But when it's on the tank and uh, all the other details are painted around it, it looks it looks nice. It's it's a nice sort of a black. And then you, you can always use more greyish tones on, on weapon casings and that, if you so wish, just to break it up a bit. So just, uh, you don't need to... Worry too much, yeah, put a bit, put a bit too much on there on the brush, just make sure it's all off it. And just lightly pick out the raised details. You can go a bit lighter on this stage because, you know, this is the, sort of we'll call it the highlight stage. So but you can see there that it's it's just really picking everything out. And just work around and uh, that's really it. Okay, so for the next part, we're uh, going to sponge on our mix of Thunderhawk Blue and a Shabdi Bone. I have some here on the palette already. So we get a little bit of sponge for that, just bunch it up, and just very lightly dab it on there and hard edges that you feel that will be taking the, the majority of the, uh, the battle damage on your vehicle. Uh, you don't need to uh, go mad doing this. 
And um, when you're finished doing this, if you so wish, you could come along, you could um, sponge on a small bit of um, lead belcher over that if you want again, just to show where it's down to the bare metal. So again, just take your time, work around, have a look at it, see how it's turning out, and uh, pick out wherever you want it, go for it. Okay guys, so I'm switching to a large brush here. This is one of the heavy metal brushes that they released a few years ago. Uh, they're absolutely great brushes. So we're going to use lead belcher now. So give you a paint again, give it a shake. Always for the metallics, give them a little bit of an extra shake just to get those uh, the little metal flakes up from the bottom of the, the paint. Mix it well. Some water on the brush there as well. And uh, some lead belcher on your palette. And uh, we always water this down as well. But don't water it down too much. Or it will actually sort of start separating on you if you if you really want to really water it down lamia medium sort of keeps it all together while thinning it out as well but a little bit of water in there just to help it flow and uh, once you've got a sort of a you'll know a nice smooth consistency that'll flow into all the recesses again we take our turret and we want to pick out all our pieces that we want as uh, silver on this now, I did not paint the underside of the uh, the big gun because you're never going to see it. So if you paint around the sides and most of it, like that's that's good enough for me. It's you know you're trying to get these units painted up as quick as you can, get them onto the tabletop. Remember, it's something that I haven't said in a while, but uh, okay, I, I know I'm painting the bottom of the barrel there, but um, something I haven't said in a while. We we go with this two foot rule. Like if it looks good from two foot, then you know, that's that's all we want. Someone walking past the table looks and they go, there's a nicely painted army. Everyone's getting down and it's like it's not a competition piece that we're painting. Do you know that we're, we're looking for every little minute detail? But anyway, work your way around, picking out all the little silver details. Um, it's up to you. Like, you go mad if you want or, you know, to do as little or as, as, as much as you like, really. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we're going to move on to the gold areas now. For this, we're going to start with a base called a Retributor Armor. Uh, as you can see, I thought I had hit record on the camera, but I actually hadn't. It was actually I had just taken a photo. Uh, so, again, we're just picking out all the areas that we want gold on this. And work it in there. We did the very same with this as I did with the lead belcher. Water it down. Um, if you need to apply two coats, go for it. Just make sure that you get good coverage because it makes all the difference in the long run. Now I know you're thinking to yourself this is a little, it's a bit of a yellowy gold, but it's a fantastic gold for a for a base coat layer, um, and any other colours you put on over it will really uh, stand out and look well when uh, when they're done. So we just want to pick out all these sort of heat sinks down along the barrel of the the, the main uh, the main cannon, uh, wherever else you think that. The Martians might put some uh, some gold as well on it. Okay, so with the gold and the silver paint, you can see that it's starting to uh, come together, look more like a tank. So we bring in the hull here as well, and we'll uh, put the turret on it, and uh, we'll just see how it's looking. And uh, yeah, looking pretty nice, coming together nicely. Like even just with those few uh, few colours on there and the bit of dry brushing. It, uh, it makes all the difference. I did the same on the sponsons as well. And uh, the two little uh, weapons sticking off the side as well. So now we're going to wash them with Reichlin Flesh Shade on the gold. And Null Noil on the silver. So uh, let's start with the uh, Null Noil. Again, uh, give it a shake there. Uh, I always like to... Uh, to work. I used to work straight out of the pot. But it's so much better if you just work out of, of a palette because you have much more control over how much wash is on your brush and uh, you tend not to uh, to flood a, an area that you may not want to. So, you know, less is more. So, you just come along and paint it there over all the silver details, working it into all the little nooks and crannies. In around the sides there. Now I did the same on the uh, the treads on this as well, and uh, we'll talk about those later on. But uh, 
Just work around. As you can see, I didn't overly detail underneath with all the gold either, like I did on top. Um, I'm not going to go mad underneath here as well. Look at down all on the barrel. And just pick out all silver details that you've done all over the tank. Now we'll move on to the Reichland flesh shed. Again, give it a good shake. Get some on your palate again. And uh, wash, rinse, repeat, really. Um, I'm using the large brush, brush here again. And uh, I'm in a clean spot on my palate now. This happens a lot to me. Uh, and again, we'll pick out the gold areas that we want to wash and just let it run into all those areas. Again, I know this looks a little brown, but once we highlight the gold, it, uh, it'll make it all okay again. Okay, so now with the uh, the turret done, we're going to move on to the uh, parts on the hull. So we're going to paint in the uh, the view screens on the front. I've already painted the lenses in um, a fist on red. I forgot to record doing that, but that is the color I used on those. So we're going to start with Caliban green because I just wanted to try and introduce some shade of green into this just as a nod to the 40k counterpart. And I thought, you know, screens, was the, the, the windows were the... Maybe the easiest thing to to do. You could always put a line, you know, if you wanted, you could you could put a like a band of green on your vehicles. It's totally up to you. I mean the nobody understands the markings of the Dark Angels anyway. So uh we just come along and I painted the whole of the lens with Caliban green. Just been careful not to get onto any of that silver that you painted earlier on. So just very neatly get the brush in there. Always make sure that you paint. If your paint is well watered, you can put it, get in there, drop it in, put it in as two thin coats, and uh, steady hand. Now we're going to move on to the lenses. So we started with fist on red, then we're going to go to uh, evil sun scarlet, then we're going to go fire dragon bright. And then we're going to put a little dot of white scar. So here's the uh, Evil Sun Scarlet over the fist on red. And you just want to paint like a an orange an orange slice shape in a lower part of the, the lens. And remember, you want to show the previous colour as you're putting on the current colour. So now we're going to put the Fire Dragon Bright on inside that Evil Sun Scarlet. Again, make sure it's well watered and you should have less problems. And then the final job of the whole lot, and this is where you really, really, really want to water it down. So whatever you water it down normally, go that little bit extra and just put a little dot of the white in the top corner. So now I'm using Tommy at Titan Gold to highlight the gold here. This was a gold I found in a hobby shop in Galway and uh, it's an absolute beautiful uh, color of gold. I don't even know if this if, I, if it's meant to be brushed on or if it's meant to be for an airbrush. I brush it on, but it's just super super shiny. I love it. Just look at that, awesome gold. So again, we work it onto the palette. This this dries really really fast. That's what makes me think that it's although it does say that it's an acrylic paint on the uh, on the thing. Maybe it's some sort of weird acrylic paint that. I don't know, you shouldn't be using. But, uh, yeah, so to show you now the difference that it makes when we put it on over all the, uh, the shaded Retributor armor, pick out those edges. Again, make sure this is thinned well. This paint dries very, very fast. That's what I will say about it. So make sure that it's thinned well and uh, do not leave it on your brush for too long, especially if you're using good brushes. Uh, now we just use the edge of the brush and we're just going to pick out the, uh, the heat sinks up and down the barrel, you can see the ones I've picked out there straight away, the difference that it makes. Really, really lovely gold. Again, taking your time, just working it around on all those happy little heat sinks. So now we've got the gold done, 
We're going to go to Stormhost Silver to highlight all the silver areas. So again, give it a good shake, get it on your palette, water it down, and we're just going to pick out the uh, the raised edges of all the uh, the silver on the the barrel. Um, this is re a re really the I would say probably the only hedge edge highlight that I I did on this vehicle. Um, you can also come along then afterwards and. What I like to do maybe is water my Stormhost Silver down even a little more and you could add an extra highlight to your gold just to make it that super shiny. But that's totally up to you. It's an optional step. You can do whatever you want to do. Okay, I did the same on the tank tracks. You can see. I'm going to use a large dry brush here for that. And uh, just to give a bit of a, a bit of life back into the tank tracks after we uh, we wash them with the null oil. Um so get some out of our palette, get it cleaned off or brush, loads of it, get as much off as you can. And we're just going to go and very carefully pick out the uh, the treads on the tank. You want to make sure that you don't hit any of the black or any of that detailing that we've done earlier on. So just a little flick in between those and uh, that's really it. Now I'm going to do some freehand checker work. So for this we're going to use white scar. Now. Doing this freehand work, I find that if you water your paint down even more than you normally would, um, you're better off doing that. And having to put on two, three, four layers than trying to do this in, you know, one or two layers and it going catastrophically wrong on you. Um, so we're, we're really, really well watered down. We've got a really, really fine tip on the brush. And we're just going to start sketching in a little line down on the panel that we want to put it on. Now, it's just about taking your time, bracing your hands together, don't hold your breath, and just run it down. Just like that. You don't need to be very straight. If it's not straight, that's no big deal. Come along, put the next one on. Try and keep the next one a bit straighter. Because remember, we have this panel painted with Abaddon Black. So when we're finished, you see I'm not happy with the consistency of the paint. You see my lines there, we just changed the angle. I always try and paint down as well. You'll find you paint a straighter, straighter line down than you will left to right. So they're all little tips and tricks. So very, very slowly, just work that in across there. Very slowly. there we go now it doesn't look very straight doesn't look very neat we're not going to worry we're going to come along now and we're going to start blocking in our squares now as we do this this is where we can sharpen up corners cut corners and other in other squares that are maybe not right so I just sped this up a little bit just that you'll see the way I worked it in there oh, I cut the end off it but anyway <laughs> see everything now to paint the cabling on the uh, the sponsons we're going flesh terrors red I highlighted the cables in uh, uh, stormhole silver and we're just going to go straight out of the pot onto the palette work it into the brush and just get your sponson and just paint the cables simple as that job done it really is that easy. You don't even have to highlight them Stormwall Silver if you don't want to. Uh, lead Belcher underneath is will will do do the very same thing. That is the way I did it on the uh, the Contempt of Dreadnoughts that I painted, and uh, I did not highlight the uh, the cabling with Stormwall Silver. I just went straight in with my uh, Flesh Terror Thread, and that's them done. So here we go. As you can see, got the red painted on there, checkering, and I'm very, very happy with how this turned out, I have to say. Uh, now we're going to paint that little grill on the front because I just thought it looked a bit bare. So we're just going to pick it out with some ashen grey on the uh, 
the raised details on it because uh, I didn't want to go mad painting it. So I think it's more than enough if we just pick out the uh, the little bits that you're going to see. Get it out there. Get some paint worked into the palette. And I will just come in here and we'll just pick out all the, uh, the raised details of it. That's it, just like that. Slow and steady, work your way along, pick them all out. And it's just enough just to break up the front. I didn't put the uh, that big dozer blade on the front, I just uh, I didn't like how it looked. So I uh, left it off. Now I did apply two coats of this, so if it's not, uh, you know, if you have to apply two coats as well, don't worry about it. Just take your time. Again, I wasn't really over overly fussed about painting right way around or in between them or anything like that. I didn't even highlight these when I had them done because uh, there was no need. So here we have the, uh, the finished Kratos battle tank. Uh, decals applied, weathering powders applied. Uh, when I was finished painting the, uh, the white checker pattern on the back of the hull, I just came along with a bit of uh, Abaddon black on a sponge and just dabbed it on. So guys, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section. Catch you later. Bye.